we're gonna get to the future in a bit, right? Yep. But before we get to the future, we can't have no future without a past and a present. Facts. So, what got you into the blast black men in SF? Mm. How did that? How did that become a thing? Did you write that too? Or? Yeah, I co-wrote it with uh, my best friend Joe, and they always, you know, they was always giving us a lot of shit about him being a white director, telling my story right, but it wasn't like he wasn't being exploited in no way. For one, this is my best friend. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have trusted nobody else to tell my story in that way because mm -hmm. nobody even knows me like him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I was always saying. It's like, y'all got to think about the fact that this is my best friend. This is not some white dude that came and was like, hey, I want to tell your story. And You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's That's not what it is. So, you know, but... And it happened, I mean, it happened super organically. It's like, it's hard, you know, because we, you know, I've obviously been through a press tour with the movie and, you know, I get this question often. And it's it's kind of blurry, like, where exactly we started to, you know, because I went, I graduated high school, I went to college in New York for like a year. And then I came back and I had a place to stay and I moved in with Joe and his family. And then, and before I even left for college, we... You know, I, we would we would always go on like long walks and just talk and shit. Like it's like that's like one of my, you know, I, I respect and I love Joe so much is because I could just be one thousand percent myself with him. Like we can talk about anything. I can be vulnerable. He knows some of my deepest, darkest secrets that I wouldn't tell nobody. And we was just talking about life one day, and I was telling him a story about my grandfather's house and whatever. He was mm -hmm. just like, oh, we should make a movie about that. But it was kind of a joke. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It just was like some shit. We, it happened organically. We were just talking and whatever. And then when I came back from college and, you know, moved in with them because I didn't have a place to stay, it uh, we were both in a weird place because I went to college. I went to Manhattan College. It was like a trade school. It's like hella business people. Wasn't really no artists there. And I didn't have the best time. Like it didn't work for me. So I was kind of depressed when I came back. And Joe, excuse me. And Joe was kind of in that same, we were kind of both in a kind of depressed state because it was like, you know, I was his best friend, I left, and he was kind of felt like a little bit lonely in the city, and I don't know if I'm butchering that, hopefully you don't kill me for that, but I, I think mm -hmm. we was in a similar state of just kind of needing to put our energy towards something. We were just mm -hmm. feeling super, you know what I mean? Like, and um, and I think just living together, we just naturally, you know, he would, you know, that crazy motherfucker wake me up in the morning, like six in the morning, motherfucker. I remember he came downstairs, nigga, at six in the morning, start sharpening a pencil for no reason. Just what do you have one of me? Yeah, literally. He was just sharpening, <laughs> and he just came down and was like, mm, and then like I woke up, this nigga was just looking at me, and I was like, the fuck, nigga. I couldn't even be mad because that's hella creative. Yeah, and like, funny. yeah, it's exactly. Just that's, random. Random. That's, that's, just, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? But yeah, he just would wake me up and just, just you know, and then we would just listen to hella music together. He would show me hella music and hella, and then we would just talk. And I think just kind of organically, it just started to happen. And then we did like this little short concept trailer, which was like, you know, the concept for Last Black Man, but just, you know, just with a little camera that we had and a couple homies we had and Ooh. put that out on the internet. And then oh. we put that on Vimeo, and then that's when we got a little more traction. People started reaching out to us, like, oh. hey, we saw this and whatever. And then, you know, from there, it was just kind of snowball effect from there. And a lot of things happened. And we did a Kickstarter, and then we did a short film, and went to Sundance there. We met some producers at Sundance. And then from there, producer from Sundance got onto the project and introduced us to A24. And then they were like, all right, come on, let's do it. And then, you know, and so it was like, it was a process, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, it, it all seems, it's still kind of hard to believe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did yeah. you did you feel like as you were doing it, like, did you know like, man, this is about to be the start of my acting career? Hell no. Nah. You didn't think that? No, I thought one thing that I knew, I knew that we were doing something that hadn't been done before. As you know what I mean? In terms of the storytelling uh -huh. and a movie being shot in San Francisco by San Franciscans in actual places that San Franciscans inhabit instead mm -hmm. of being like, 
you know what I mean? Like Venom, where they only downtown and whatever, or like that other movie where The Rock, where they blow up the Golden Gate Bridge and shit. You know what I mean? It's like, they're not really in, you know what I mean? So it's like, we knew we was coming up with a movie where people from San Francisco gonna be like, damn, I, I was just there. Mm -hmm. And I go there all the time, and you know what I mean? So we knew that, but we didn't think it was gonna be, nah, absolutely not. I mean, every day we came to set, and I know Joel attests to this, it's like every day we came to set with a weight on our shoulders, like, you know, Joe, I'm not a classically trained actor. I didn't go to school for it or nothing. Joe didn't go to school for directing film school or nothing like that. And they took a chance on us. And you go to Academy of Art? He went to soda, but I mean, besides that, I mean, oh, that's just high school, though, you know, but um, and so every day we, I, you know, I had that weight on. We had that weight on our shoulders where it's like, you know, we got to bring this shit because for one, we making this movie about San Francisco and if the people in the city don't even like it we still got to live here and we got to live with that motherfuckers coming up to us like mm, bullshit ass movie. like you know i don't know if you know about when la mission came out yeah motherfuckers boycotting that motherfuckers they was like nigga why you put all this you know what i mean woo, woo, woo. Yeah, I and that you know but that also was you know that was a different time yeah. and it's like you know i'm sure if a movie like that was to come out now it would it, it hopefully <laughs> have a better you know yeah. what i mean whatever but um, so yeah, I mean, we we was thinking about that the whole time, and we was just like, you know, we just we just gotta do what we can, and and luckily we just we we happened to just meet all these great people that just was all about the story, and just you know, they made they gave me a space where I could feel comfortable to be able to do what I needed to do for it, you know what I mean? Because we was learning along the way, but you know, I had all the people behind me, all the producers and the people that worked on it that just was really there for us, you know what I'm saying? So as a as someone who, like you said, you didn't, you weren't a proper actor, you didn't go to school for it, and this guy who's shooting a movie, granted he's your best friend, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't go to school for it or whatever. Mm -hmm. A lot of people said you can barely get your friends to rap over your beat if you're a beat maker. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. what, what, what gave you the confidence in, um, at one, being the lead man in the movie, mm -hmm. and two, even mm -hmm. just finishing it like what you obviously have to put your confidence in something to give this thing your all and so what did you give your confidence in knowing that oh this ain't nigga uh this ain't wes anderson yeah. <laughs> um, um, fucking uh i mean again it, it, you know movies are collaborative you know what i'm saying so you want to be you want to be on a set that feels like family Mm -hmm. type shit so it's like when i was on last black man the set the set felt like family and i feel like the reason i was able to get get over that hump and be like okay i'm gonna get my all i'm gonna be vulnerable i'm gonna, I'm gonna do what i need to do for this and because they made me feel like my story because i didn't think that no one was gonna give a fuck about my story i really did not you know what i mean because the, the way the way we're raised is like don't nobody give a fuck about you mm -hmm. you know what i mean that's the way we raised so i was like I didn't think nobody was going to give a fuck about mm -hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? But I had all these people around me that's like, nah, I'm here for this story. And I think that this story needs to be put out there. And they was putting that in my head. And then that's like, that made me believe in myself to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And so it really was like a family, man, on set. It really was. And, you know, I'm thankful that I'm still in contact with a lot of those people today. I would work with any of those people again. And, you know, I mean they made it all possible. Again, it's it's all a collaboration. You know what I'm saying? It's like all movies are collaborations. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's why, you know, when we was talking about earlier about, you know, when certain people be, you know, are known that certain actors are like difficult to work with. Uh, yeah. You're you're never gonna catch me being that person because mm -hmm. I'm I refuse to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's all collaborative. We mm -hmm. I can't do this without you. No, sure. Just like you can't you do this can't without me. me. You know what I mean? So no, nobody means more than anyone. We are all the same here. We're all working towards the same goal. No, that's 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 one hundred percent, bro. Because even when I'm.